Good morning and welcome back to our class. Our topic for today is break-even point. Break-even point is a decision-making aid that enables a business to determine whether a particular volume of sales will result in a loss or profit. Here are the reasons why we use the BEP. So the first one is to see if your monthly income is more than your expenses. Next is to determine minimum price product can be sold for. Other one is to determine optimum price product can be sold for. And finally, to calculate effects of marketing programs on price. So let's have the formula that we will use for the break-even point. So we have here, okay, price per unit times the number of units is equal to fixed cost plus variable cost times the number of units. Take note that on the left hand side, so that is actually the revenue and on the right hand side is equal to the total cost. If the revenue is the same as the total cost, then we can say that we have the break even. There are three scenarios regarding the revenue and the total cost. If the revenue is greater than the total cost, we have what we call profit. On the other hand, if the revenue is equal to the total cost, then we have the break even. On the other hand, if the revenue is less than your total cost, then we have what we call loss. If I want to get the break even point in terms of units, I'll start with the formula P times X is equal to F plus B times X. Take note that if I subtract both sides of the equation by b of x or b times x, okay, here, and subtract also b times x on this side, so we'll come up with p times x minus b of b times x is equal to f. But since the common factor is x, I'll factor it out. Okay, so I have here x times p minus b is equal to f. Then, I would like to look for the value of x, so divide both sides by p minus p, okay? So, I have now here x is equal to fixed cost divided by, okay, price per unit minus the variable cost, or x is equal to f divided by p minus b. Let's have our example number one. Ray owns a burger stand. The cost for making a burger is 7 pesos and he sells it for 12 pesos. His fixed cost per month is 10,000 pesos. How many burgers must be sold to reach the break-even point? So before we solve, let's identify the given. So take note that the price per unit is 12 pesos, the variable cost is 7 pesos, and the fixed cost is 10,000 pesos, and we want to find out the number of units to break even. Again, we will use the formula x is equal to f all over p minus b. Then we will plug in the given numbers, such that I have 10,000 divided by 12 minus 7. But 12 minus 7 is equal to 5. So I have here x is equal to 10,000 divided by 5. So x is equal to 2,000. So therefore, 2,000 burgers must be sold in order to break even. To verify whether our answer is correct or not, so we will go back to the idea such that the revenue is equal to the total cost. Take note that for the revenue that is P times X, well, the total cost is equal to F plus B times X, such that, okay, we have 12 for the price times the number of units is equal to 12, uh, 2,000, which is equal to, okay, the fixed cost is equal to 10,000 plus the variable cost is 7, while the number of units is equal to 2,000. So let's find out. What is the product of 12 times 2,000? So that is actually 24,000. On the right side, we have 10,000 plus the product of 7 and 2,000. So I have here 24,000. Is it equal to 10,000 plus 14,000? Then, upon the verification, 24,000 is equal to 24,000. 
So, we have the break-even point. Meaning to say that the number of burgers, which is actually 2,000, is the number of units to break even. Let's move on to our second example. Jerry owns a lemonade stand. Costs him 2 pesos to make a glass of lemonade and sells it for 10 pesos. If his fixed cost per month is 12,000 pesos, how many glasses of lemonade must be sold to break even? So let's identify the given first. So P is equal to 10, B is equal to 2 pesos, fixed cost is 12,000 pesos, and unknown number of units. We want to find out the number of units to break even. So let's start with the formula. So that is X is equal to F divided by P minus B. Then we simply plug in all the numbers such that I have 12,000 for the fixed cost. The selling price is equal to 10 pesos minus the variable cost is equal to 2. But I have 10 minus 2 which is equal to 8. So I have here 12,000 divided by 8. So X is equal to 1,500. So therefore... 1,500 gla glasses of lemonade must be sold. So let's have the third example. Maggie owns a florist shop. She buys each bunch of flowers for 149 pesos and special wrapping paper for 300 pesos per roll. Each roll of wrapping paper will wrap 300 bunches of flowers. Rent of her premises is 10,500 per month and she pays monthly insurance of 2,000 pesos. Maggie sells each band of flowers for 250 pesos. What is the break-even point? So before we solve this problem, let's identify first the given. So take note that the selling price is 250 pesos. Next is the fixed cost. We have two fixed costs, namely the rent and the insurance. So rent is 10,500 pesos, while the insurance is 2,000 pesos. And the total fixed cost is 12500 Next one. The variable cost is composed of the flowers as well as the paper. Take note, the cost of flowers as a variable cost is 149 pesos. While the paper is 1 pesos per roll. Take note that there are 300 pesos per 300 pieces. So meaning to say that is 1 pesos per bunch of flower. So... The variable cost or the total variable cost is 150 pesos. So, the selling price is 250 pesos, the variable cost is 150, and the fixed cost is 12,500. Now, we want to find out the break-even point such that x is equal to f divided by p minus b, and we will plug in these numbers. So, 12,500 divided by 250 minus 150, but take note that 250 minus 150 will give us 100. So 12,500 divided by 100 will give us 125. Therefore, so there are 125 bunches of flowers to be sold to break even. The break even point analysis has also limitations. So the first one is assumes that sales prices are constant at all levels of output. Second, assume productions and sales are the same. Third, break-even charts may be time-consuming to prepare. And finally, it can only apply to a single product or single mix of products.